Hello friends out there in YouTube land, Rob Ham here. Today we're going to talk about the new Fujifilm Instax Evo camera, a hybrid digital camera printer for Instax Mini Film that's coming out here in the States in 2022, February timeline. I have gone ahead and pre-ordered this. That doesn't necessarily mean that you should. I did it with a few reservations. We'll talk about those in a moment. Uh, but before we get into that, Happy New Year. I hope that you're doing well and hope that you stay well in 2022. If you guys like this video, don't forget to like and comment down below. If you think, see anything you like, you can use the Amazon links and help support us that way. Otherwise, let's jump into it. So the concept is real simple. This is a digital camera that has a physical printer and it prints Instax Mini film. It would be much the same as taking a digital camera, putting it on this Instax Mini printer, and then having something that looks like that. Uh, the other side of it is Fujifilm has done this a couple of times. They've done this with one of their Instax Square cameras. This is not it. Um, I believe it was the Instax Square 10, but I'm not going to worry so much about that. Uh, it, once again, it's a digital camera on an analog printer that allows you to take photos and print them. They also did it with the LePlay, the Le Play or whatever, uh, which has more of a, a hybrid Mini 90 Instax Square kind of look. I don't know. It looked like a toy. It wasn't anything I was ever interested in. And then they have done it here. Now, here on the Instax Evo, we actually have something different that Fujifilm is attempting to do. And that is they're actually bringing their X100F series or X100 series styling to the Instax line. And this is very important. Uh, notice how the camera looks like a small rangefinder from the 1970s. Right? This is a Ricoh 500G in that timeline. We've also got an Olympus 35RC right here. Beautiful small camera and it's, it's really looking very similar to that. And that's important because these features, this look right here, is immediately elevating and saying that the camera is for grown-ups. Right? When you look at a lot of the Instax line, you'll find that they actually are very toy. Uh, oriented, very childish kind of looking, and it's difficult to find one that you wouldn't look silly taking at, uh, taking with you on a wedding, or at least in my case, that it is. If you're in college or you've got some daughters or some kids or whatever, that's fine. But even something like the Lee Play, which is relatively understated with its blush accents and things like that, just kind of isn't what you're going to find in most professional shooting situations. Now, you might ask me, why would you ever want to take a camera like this to a professional shooting situation? Like, what would be the purpose of actually using this type of a camera at a wedding where you use them? And if, for those of you that don't know, I got started using cameras like the TL70 at weddings because I enjoy adding instant photography to my actual photography, my wedding photography, to allow for people to have extra things. It's nice. People love instant photos. It's a great way to make friends. It's a great way to influence people and stand out. Instant prints are really cool. And once you start shooting with them, you'll recognize the power that they have for building your brand and making friends and all that stuff. So when you're at a wedding, if you're shooting a couple of rolls of instant film or a couple packs of instant film, even if the client didn't pay for it, you'll at least have something unique that you can give them later as a gift if you would like to give them, or just hold on for yourself as a memoir of your team working. Sometimes I take my cameras with me and I just photograph my team members doing their job, then I give those images to my team members. The problem is, whenever you do something like that, everyone always wants the instant picture because, well, they're just magical and fun. Here's the Mini 90, a camera that I used at plenty of weddings prior to the TL70, and uh, I really enjoyed it a lot. Now, the thing about it is, Fujifilm's got the lockdown on the camera chemistry for the film to make images that look really good. It just develops nicely. When we're talking about Polaroid, like this One Step Plus right here, um, I love shooting Polaroid. I truly enjoy it. I'm glad that it's back, but uh, the processing is still a little hit or miss. That doesn't keep me from using this camera because I enjoy it quite a bit. I even like the Polaroid Go. The thing that we're talking about with all of these cameras right here are that they are analog cameras. They're real cameras that create a real image on film. There is only one. There's no SD card or memory card. Once the picture is taken, it's done. Like it or leave it, it is what it is. There's something very unique about that. This camera does not do that. This is a digital, film, uh, this is a digital camera stuck to a film printer. And my, I've often thought with things like the Le Play or the Square 10 or these ideas that Fujifilm is sticking this digital printer or digital camera onto the Instax Mini printer, I've always said to myself, dang, if I'm going to do that, I'll just take my X-T2 or 3 or whatever I had, 
and my Instax Mini printer, and I'll just print whatever I want. Or my Instax Wide printer, and I'll just print whatever picture I want to give away. That way I'll have a high quality image on my camera, and then I will also have a regular print that I can make just like a regular photo printer. Uh, in fact, to that end, you can actually use any image that's on your cell phone to photograph and give, well, to print as well, because your printer will work just fine. In fact, with the Instax Evo right here, you will also be able to print images that are on your cell phone through the camera printer. Great. Not a problem, right? Well, I guess where you get into the, the discussion for me kind of got into the issue was why would I pre-order this? And I did pre-order this. So I'll have one coming in and I'll do a review and share my thoughts with you. But I pre-ordered it because it finally does something that makes sense to me. And that is it doesn't look like a toy. Uh, it also has some very interesting features. It seems like the, uh, the menu and the, the actual processing power has been updated, as well as the actual printer is updated on its dots prints that can print from ca images on the camera itself. And it's got an SD card, so you could load your own images on there to take advantage of that higher DPI printing. But more importantly than anything else, some of the software features that I like about this happen to be uh, the well, the two-frame, the half-frame camera look, I think that's cool. That's something we couldn't do with an analog um, Instax camera at this point in time. We couldn't do a half-frame look, so you can get that. That is a real reason to use this camera. Two images on one print printed out. That's nice. Um, but for me, the other big reason is that it's got a lot of um, I guess digital features that I like that I could see myself using, specifically the different lens modes. Well, these are nothing more than filters, but Fujifilm always does a good job at adding these filters uh, to cameras uh, in the ideas of color, uh, well, color profiles and things like that, film simulations, and so I'm looking forward to seeing it here. It looks like it's been implemented in a way here that makes sense to me. But the biggest reason that I think this camera makes sense to me is because it actually looks like a camera that I would use at a wedding that wouldn't look out of place at a wedding. So in this instance, yes, it looks good enough to use, so I'll take it on a wedding and see how it does. I'm sure that I will like it. The problem is the digital sensor is not something you would... Uh, well, it's, I mean, it's, a, it's about a 4.5 megapixel sensor. Think about that. It's an equivalent 28 um, millimeter focal length lens. And I like 28 millimeters, that's great. But most of their cameras are around 60 millimeters, right? Um, the Instax Square 6, I think, which one is this one? 60 or 90, let's look at it. Well, it doesn't tell me on the lens anymore. I wish that it did, but I believe it's around 60 or 63 millimeters right here. Here, we're at a 60 something millimeter lens right here as well. Um, this wider angle lens it could be kind of problematic. It could actually hide some of the issues of this digital sensor, which is at a strange resolution set to match uh, the long, well, the, the, the Instax Mini format. That's what, it's, that really, that's what it matches. Um, so I've gone ahead and picked it up because I want to test that, but aside from anything, I'm sure that it will print images good enough to look at on the film. No problem there. But this is, this is where I've got an issue with Fujifilm doing stuff like this. If they were gonna make a camera that would print images good enough uh, with that little sensor, why in the world wouldn't they give us a sensor that is more in line with something that our smartphones have today? Why wouldn't we get a bigger sensor? It would allow for better telephoto options. It would allow for better cropping. It would allow for better low light, better things, it, all kinds of things, right? It would allow for all of those things right there. Also, a better sensor with a better uh, good, uh, dynamic range would even be good for archiving purposes. Now, that being said, if I really was worried about photographing and having the best image quality possible, I wouldn't take a camera like that. But I would like image quality better than a four megapixel or four and a half megapixel sensor, right? So that I could actually use the sensor, <laughs> right, that digital image as a backup as, or as even actual a deliverable image. In fact, I think it might be closer to five megapixels, the actual, uh, 
dimensions of the sensor, the megapixels, the pixels in there. Um, but remember, if you wanted to print an 8x10 of something, you really need around um, 8 megapixels, something like that. So if you want to print a nice 8x10, 8 mega, this doesn't even have it, so you couldn't even print the images that you're printing here without up them, which is easy to do in Photoshop now, or, or Lightroom at least, there's that. They've got that dual res. You could do it in Topaz, I suppose, if you wanted. But really, we're just we're going around in a big circle here for a camera like that. I recognize that it's actually outside the wheelhouse or the design of this camera. It's uh, intended use, and that's okay, too. So that brings me to the final part of this conversation, which is when is a camera manufacturer going to actually make an instant camera that is professional for us and have it in a price range that makes sense, right? Um, we actually have the answer to that. And we have the RF70 by Mint camera. Around 800 bucks, you can shoot Instax wide and you have full automatic or manual control, whichever you prefer. This is the way to do it. So when you head out to a wedding that you want to photograph, you actually go in there with a camera like this where you can dial in your settings and you can actually go ahead and get the image that you want. And that's it, the price gap. There's, there's a $400, $500 price gap between the two, depending on if you buy this used or you buy it new or something like that. You, you, you've got to, you've, they, somebody's got to come in there and be able to make something that is a little bit more expensive than this and a little bit less expensive than the RF70. But even with that, if you're going to take instant photography seriously at a wedding, then the camera to do it with is something like the RF70. There really isn't another camera that's going to do the job. And that's because you have full control over it. And when you have full control, you can actually produce gorgeous prints and images. Heck, you can even use flash with that. So maybe we've already answered our own question or the question I posed here. But if you guys think you know of a brand or someone that might come out or what you think manufacturers might do, I'd love to hear what you have to say. Are you going to pick one of these up? I just couldn't resist. I had to get one. I would also like to see when Polaroid is going to come out and update their beautiful land camera. When is the SX70 going to get updated? Now, I got this one that I can use. I enjoy using it, but dang it. When are they going to come out with one? I'm ready. It's time. It's 2022. It's time for these camera manufacturers to actually start bringing us some instant cameras that do the job the way we want. And don't even get me started on when someone's going to make the next real camera, like film camera. I would love to see that. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Guys, I'm Rob with Robert Hand Photography. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Tell me what you think. Don't forget to use the Amazon links if you see something you like. I'll catch you all on the flip side. Happy New Year.